Unit 10 is about chemical kinetics, and in part one, we're going to be looking at an introduction to rate. Okay, so obviously kinetics is the study of the rate at which chemical processes occur. In case you've forgotten, uh, in a reaction, the bonds of the reactants are broken, and energy has to be absorbed to break those bonds. Then the atoms and molecules are rearranged, and new bonds of the products are formed, and when that happens, energy is released. We also know that molecules are in constant motion, and they can only react with each other if they collide with each other. Well, for molecules to react when they collide with each other, uh, not only does the collision have to take place, but they have to be facing the correct direction or have the correct orientation and collide with enough energy to break the old bonds and cause the formation of the new ones. So in this picture, the uh, top one has the correct orientation and energy for the reaction to take place. So you see we end up with new products after the collision. In the bottom picture, they don't have the right orientation. The molecules just bounce off of each other. A reaction didn't take place. There are four main factors that affect the rate of a reaction. The first one is the physical state of the reactants. Well, in order for uh, reactants to react with each other, they have to come in contact with each other. And the more homogeneous the mixture is, the faster the molecules can react with each other. Next is the concentration of the reactants. Uh, the higher the concentration, the higher the likelihood of molecules colliding correctly. So the higher the reactant concentration, the faster the rate's going to be. Temperature is next. At high temperature, reactant molecules have more kinetic energy and move faster, so that means they're going to be colliding more frequently and with higher energy to make sure that the old reactant bonds are broken and the new product bonds can be formed. The next factor that affects the reaction rate is the presence of a catalyst. A catalyst is something that speeds up reactions by changing the mechanism of the reaction. We'll talk about mechanisms in detail in video 10.4, but a catalyst lowers the uh, activation energy for the reaction and they're not consumed during the course of the reaction. So a catalyst goes in and is still left over when the reaction is completed. The rate of a reaction can be determined by monitoring the change in concentration of either the products or the reactants as a function of time. So if we look at time zero here, before the reaction has started, we've got one mole of A, the reactants, and zero moles of B, the products. We start the reaction, and you can see that the concentration of A, the reactants, decreases, while the concentration of B, the products, increases, and that uh, is going to hold true as the reaction goes forward. The reactants are going to decrease, they're going to disappear, they're going to get used up, and the product's concentration is going to increase. They're going to keep getting formed. If we look at this reaction and the data that goes with it, uh, we've got butyl chloride reacting with water. We can determine the average rate at these various times by using this equation. It's going to be the change in concentration divided by the change in time. So in all of these spots here in the table, it was the change in concentration divided by the change in time. As you can see, the average rate in molarity per second slows down significantly as the reaction goes on. That's because as we're using the reactants up, there are fewer collisions that are going to produce the product molecules. So the uh, best way to, uh, or the best indicator of rate for a reaction is the instantaneous rate near the beginning of the reaction. So this 1.9 or 1.7 would be our best indicator of the average rate for this reaction. This is what that data looks like when we graph it. As you can see, the reaction slows down significantly over time. The uh, slope of a line tangent to the curve at any point is the instantaneous rate at that time. So if we've got our concentration on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, if we take the slope of a, a tangent line to any of these points, that'll tell us the instantaneous rate or the rate at that time for the reaction. Now, in this example, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio for everything. Everything has a coefficient of one. So for 
uh, every one water molecule that's used up, one HCl is going to appear. But what if that ratio is not one to one? For example, in this reaction, we've got the coefficient of two in front of hydrogen iodide gas as it decomposes into hydrogen and iodine gas. So what this means is it takes two HI molecules to produce one H2 and one I2 molecule. So the rate of disappearance, or rate of being used up for the reactant here, is going to be twice as fast as the rate of the product appearing because of this 2 to 1 or this 2 to 1 mole ratio. Your question for this section, write a balanced reaction for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, into water and oxygen gas. If the average rate of disappearance of H2O2 is 0.05 molarity per second, determine the rate of appearance for oxygen gas.